Hi, and welcome to the Advanced WebRTC Architecture course. We're now in Section 1, the basics of WebRTC, and we're going to take the introduction of this course. There are two ways in which you could come to this course. One of them is by taking the WebRTC Basics free course or through the Advanced WebRTC Architecture course. The introduction applies to both of them. My name is Tachil Vent Levy, and I'm the owner of a blog called Blog Geek Me. I'm a consultant and analyst in digital communication, where my main focus is WebRTC. I also deal a lot with CPaaS, Communication Platform as a Service, and Machine Learning and Art Artificial Intelligence, where it touches the areas and domains of WebRTC and CPaaS. I was the past co-founder and CEO of a company called TestRTC. TestRTC is a service today that deals with uh, monitoring and testing WebRTC-based applications. Go check it out. The company was acquired by Spearline, and then I became the chief product officer at Spearline, dealing with all of the product lines that Spearline has, which also included number testing. Spearline was later acquired, which made me a senior director of product management at Ciara, where I deal with everything related to TestRTC and WebRTC across the portfolio. What are we going to do in this lesson? Um, this is the introduction. So what I'm going to do is go through the motions, show you exactly the courses and tracks that exist in webrtccourse.com. We're going to talk in detail about the advanced WebRTC architecture course, what's in it, the different modules and lessons, and what you can expect from the course. I'll briefly go over the other courses that I have for WebRTC developers. And then we'll review the learning experience and tools that are available as part of these courses. Let's start. Let's look at the courses and tracks that are available to you. There are two tracks. If you go to webrtccourse.com, you'll find two tracks there. One is a support track that is focused on support teams that need to assist users that have WebRTC related issues. And then there is a developer track, which is designed for those that need to build products and make better decisions. So this would be developers, product managers, system architects, QA teams, everyone that deals with development. We're talking about the developers track here, okay? In the developer track, there are multiple courses. The first one is the WebRTC Basics course. This is a free course that is available and this is introduction for this course as well. The WebRTC Basics course is actually the first module of a larger course called Advanced WebRTC Architecture. Again, this is introduction for both of these courses. We will go in detail through what goes into the Advanced WebRTC Architecture course, but in short, this course purpose is to make you an expert in understanding WebRTC and in being able to take a problem, design and architect a solution for it, and then go and implement it. There's a code lab course called WebRTC The Missing Code Lab. This course was built alongside Philip Henke, the guy with the most amount of uh, bugs in uh, LibWebRTC inside Chrome. Uh, in this course, we go over WebRTC and the APIs and how to use them. There's a WebRTC tooling course that shows the different open source solutions as well as code snippets and other thoughts around WebRTC. The last two courses, are the low-level WebRTC protocols and the higher-level WebRTC protocols. These courses go into details, into the inards of WebRTC, the protocols, how to read them, how to use them, and how they are implemented in terms of the algorithms. Let's start with advanced the advanced WebRTC architecture course. Remember, we're talking about the basics, WebRTC basics course and the advanced WebRTC architecture course. There are 56 lessons at this point in time, four quizzes as part of the course, and roughly 19 hours of recorded video. If you look at the Advanced WebRTC Architecture course at its modules, the baseline for that is module number one. We're in module number one, where we talked about the basics of WebRTC. This is where I explain what WebRTC is, how it works exactly, the concepts around it, things like that, just to get you familiarized with the technology and a bit uh, with the actual terms that are used with WebRTC. The next two modules are the signaling modules. One of them is networking basics, module number two. 
In networking basics, we're going to look at the network level and see what kind of protocols we have there, irregardless of WebRTC. Module 3, we'll talk about WebRTC signaling specifically. What do we do when we want to um, signal things related to the sessions that we want to open? The next two modules deal, deal with media. Module number 4 will familiarize us with the codex, those that are used with WebRTC, but also codex as a whole. So if you come from the signaling domain, for example, and you know nothing about Codex, this would be a very interesting um, module for you to go through its lessons. Module number five looks at media processing. How do you take these Codex and these capabilities that exist in the Codex and then build a solution from a media processing architecture, doing group calls and doing recordings and uh, streaming and other such solutions. Module number six, deals with third-party frameworks and services. We're going to look at the ecosystem around WebRTC, what vendors and solutions are available then, and which ones to use when. Module number seven will go through common WebRTC design patterns. Essentially, we'll take what we've learned from module one until module six, think about problems, real-world problems, okay, and see how we solve them with WebRTC design patterns. What kind of an architecture would we look for when we build our solution and what will be the things that we'll put more focus and attention to for these specific problems? Module 8 is a bonus materials module. So what are we going to learn? These eight modules that we have from the WebRTC basics through signaling and media to how the ecosystem looks like, design patterns, and bonus materials. Let's see what lessons we have in each and every one of them. In the WebRTC basics, what we're going to do is to go through this introduction that we're doing now. Then we'll have a lesson about what exactly is WebRTC, okay? how it is defined, when did it, what was the history, how it is used, you know, these types of things. Then there's a lesson around browsers and device coverage. We'll see where WebRTC is supported, how we had support, where we don't have support for it, and deal with going through that part of the ecosystem. Then we have a quick lesson that talks about WebRTC APIs. What are the APIs that are available to us in the browser, the concepts around using them. There is a lesson around resources. Where can you learn more outside of these courses? The resources include both uh, websites and um, assets that I've created throughout the years, but also other vendors and other people that created additional resources. So make sure to go through this list. Again, this module of the basics of WebRTC is actually the full WebRTC basics course. Then we move toward signaling, networking basics. We'll start by looking at TCP and UDP, explain how they work and what they mean, reliability of connections, ordering, and other aspects that go into networking. Then we'll go into what happens in browsers. This will include a discussion around HTTP and later WebSockets. HTTP and WebSockets are the tools that are available to us inside web browsers to communicate. We'll discuss NAT traversal. This is going to be a very important lesson. For those using WebRTC, you know how hard it is to deal with NAT traversal. We'll learn about ICE, TURN, and STAN, how they are used, why they are used, and we'll discuss best practices around using them. There's a lesson about the three layers of voice over IP and where WebRTC fits there. This would be very interesting for those of you who come with voice over IP experience into these courses. Then we'll have a lesson around media quality metrics. What are the metrics that are being used uh, to define and decide if the quality of the media is good or bad? And what do they mean? We'll review jitter, latency, bitrate, packet loss, these kinds of metrics. The last lesson is going to be about web transport. This is an upcoming interface in the browser that is augmenting or being added on top of HTTP and WebSockets. We'll go then to the WebRTC signaling module. Here we'll discuss about transport and signaling protocols in WebRTC. This part is built and designed so you can choose which signaling protocol to use, and on top of what transport. We'll also have a lesson around SDP, explaining how SDP works and how to parse it and what can you find in SDP itself. SDP is our 
kind of a signaling protocol without signaling that exists in WebRTC. There will be a lesson about security around WebRTC. This is a very important one where we'll go through the aspects of security that exist in WebRTC and what is expected of you as a developer to add on top of that. There is also a lesson around screen sharing. Moving on to the media modules, well, the first one will be around codecs. In the codec section, we're going to go through the basics of voice codecs and video codecs. Regardless of WebRTC, you need to understand how codecs work if you want to use something like WebRTC. And this is where I'll explain how codecs work, their concepts, uh, the aspect of uh, lossiness in codecs, the fact that we don't compress everything, for example. For voice codecs, we'll drill down and dig deeper into Opus. Opus is the main audio codec existing today in WebRTC. On the video side, we're going to have additional lessons around VP8 and H.264. These would be, let's say, the mandatory to implement codecs in WebRTC. We'll also discuss VP9 and HEVC and the upcoming and rising AV1 codec. This will give you an understanding of the um, codecs available and should help you also pick and choose the codec that you need for your application. Module number five, this is where we start talking about media processing. We've talked about signaling, we've seen codecs, now we need to start wrapping things up together. We'll start by talking about RTP and RTCP. These are the protocols that are used to actually send media over the network. We'll see how they work and why. We'll talk later about bandwidth estimation and how that affects video processing. Okay, very important. And then we're going to have three lessons that deal with different architectures of media processing. Mesh, mixing and routing. Today, most will use routing for group calling, for example, but mixing and mesh have their place and a very important place in WebRTC solutions. You'll need to know all of them to understand which ones to use when. In many cases, you're going to uh, use two of them at the very least in your solutions. There's a lesson about recording and how that works in WebRTC, giving you and listing all of the different ways in which vendors have decided to implement recording on top of WebRTC. And then we're going to talk about artificial intelligence in media. Our next module is going to go up one layer. We're going to not deal with the protocols themselves or how things are sent over the network, but rather the ecosystem. We're going to look at third-party frameworks and services that are available for us. We'll start with development strategies for WebRTC. What should you do when you start? Should you build on your own, buy something? How much ownership do you want to take over the solution? And then we're going to review the different aspects of the infrastructure and the different alternatives we have. There's a lesson dealing with signaling, one around media servers, then about CPAS, platform as a service, managed solutions. We'll talk about VoIP frameworks, voice over IP frameworks where WebRTC is needed sometimes and we'll look at testing and monitoring solutions. The next module is about WebRTC design patterns. We'll start by explaining the media flows in WebRTC. What are the different connections that we have and what are they used for and different architectures that you can, uh, can uh, different scenarios that you can end up with when talking about WebRTC. We're going to look at different solutions. These are going to be meetings recorder, multi-party conferences, webinars, and live streaming. We're going to look at PSTN connectivity, and then we're going to have a lesson around optimizing large group calls. The purpose of this module is to get you to think about what you've learned so far and start putting the building blocks together into a solution. In the last module, what we have is bonus materials. These are different lessons that didn't fit elsewhere, where I'm going to discuss WebRT standardization, writing requirements, basics of machine learning when it comes to WebRTC, a bit about media algorithms that exist in WebRTC, how to configure your firewalls and best practices around that. And then there are things like two uh, guest lessons about video quality and deploying turn servers on AWS. And then there are about a bit of extras and free mini courses. What you'll also have in the bonus materials is the recorded office hours and AMA sessions. There are many series of videos that are available. You can find them on my website, but they are more readily available through the course. 
These are going to discuss WebRTC server-side basics, to choose H.264 V8 for your solution, and how to connect more calls with WebRTC. One of the tools that I have for this specific course is a curriculum checklist. This is a page that is available on the links below this specific lesson. You can go open that PDF, print it, and put it on the board next to you. This way you can mark what you've, been what you've taken and see exactly your progress in the course. You can also use the mark complete uh, buttons on the actual lesson.